invited us very kindly, very thoughtfully, to sit in the front row. Isn't wow. that nice of them? So we could not escape. So all 15 of us sat there. The guy preached, or pastor preached a wonderful, powerful message. I lifted my hand and I accepted Christ that night. I was 23 years old and I had long hair. And um, the moment I did, I realized all that I was searching for in life, all the peace that kept eluding me, all the joy that kept eluding me, all the fulfillment and security that kept eluding me, suddenly I received all of that when I accept Christ. And I realized that moment that he was the one I was searching for and had no idea what it was. And then I began to weep like a baby. Mm. I was uncontrollable. I totally lost control of myself and wept. Um, I didn't care what my friends thought. We're all surfers and what have you. I didn't care. I just knew this is what I'd received and I wanted to hold on to it with all I, I was worth. So. Uh, the next day I was signing a three-year contract with the hotel that I had the disco in. It was a big lounge area, you could seat about three, four, five hundred people. I took all the money from the gate, they made all the money from the bar. It was empty before I got there. I had signed a six-month contract with them. They were so excited, now we're going to sign a three-year contract the next day. Wow. So I went to see the pastor upstairs in his office directly after the service. Well, firstly. I went to the back room, knelt at a bench, and a man knelt next, next to me. His name was Willie Conradi. I still remember his name. 1971, September 12th. And he said to me, all right, now that you've prayed the prayer of salvation, given life to Christ, choose night we have Bible study. Can you make that? I said, sure. He said, Thursday night we have prayer meeting. Can you make that? I said, sure. He said, Friday night we have a youth meeting here. Can you make that? I said, sure. He said, Sunday morning, we have believer service. Can you make that? I said, sure. He said, then Sunday night is the outreach meeting. Can you make that? I said, sure. So uh, then he said, one more thing. Will you tithe? I said, what's that? He said, 10% of all you receive, you bring to the church and give that to God. I said, okay. And I've been doing that ever since then, until wow. now. More than 50 years. You know, as I'm, I'm hearing this testimony, there's some really keys to your, your spiritual growth is that you, they ask you and you said yes. And I always tell people, if you're ever going to reach your potential or reach your destiny in God or in anything, you have to yes your way into it. Because most people are, oh, I don't know, let's see. Right. And their lack of commitment causes mm -hmm. them to stay in a place exactly. where they're stuck, they don't grow, and they're in church but they don't say yes. And exactly. you knew that your yes was costing you oh, everything. Yeah. What did your yes cost you? Everything, because I, um, the next day I went to go and see the owner of the hotel to sign the three-year contract. But first day I went to the pastor that night after service. And I said, I don't know why, but I can't do this anymore. This is what I do for a living. I can't motivate everybody to drink alcohol and, and do that kind of stuff because I don't know why, I'm changed now from this meeting. Wow. So he said, well, get a job in selling. Sell, yeah. get a selling job. So I said, okay, fine. The next day I went to sign the contract and I spoke to the owner of the hotel. I sat across from him in his desk and I said, something happened to me last night. I can't do this. He said, what happened? I said, I gave my life to Christ. I'm a Christian. I'm saved and I can't do this anymore. So he said, look, why not? So I said, because I don't want the kids coming in here and getting drunk. So he said, well, you're keeping them off the streets because there's so much trouble out there, oh. problems out there. You're doing a good Christian thing by giving them a place to come and dance and be, have fun and safety. So I said, I just don't feel good about it. Now I'm not signing the contract. Now I had thousands of dollars worth of equipment in that building, okay. but I walked out. So um, I then went to a record shop. I canceled my contract, paid it up in full. Then I went to a Bible bookshop and I said, I want a Bible. Now I graduated high school, but I said, I want a Bible that's modern, that I can read easily. Right. So they showed me one paperback Bible and it had pictures in it. It was called Good News for Modern Man. And I said, that's what I want. It was easy to read like yeah. the living Bible, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So I bought that, I went home and I started reading Matthew that day. 
Wow. Didn't go to the disco. I just wow. left it. I didn't even worry about it. Tuesday, all day, Wednesday. I didn't surf, I didn't do karate, I did nothing. I just stayed there and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Thursday night, my brother comes to see me. He says, what's going on here? Don't you know we're playing, we're running the disco. We, we, we're taking the money, we're playing the music. We're doing everything, the lights, everything. Where have you been? I said, I've been here. He says, doing what? Now, he was a little younger than me, very smart. Came first at the, in university. He said, he was arrogant. He says, what are you doing here? I said, I'm reading my Bible. He said, why? What happened to you? I said, Sunday night, I went to church and I got saved. He said, saved from what? Allah said, I'm going to heaven. Wow. So he said, what are you going to do when you get to heaven? So I said, well, I remember seeing a religious book somewhere. Right. And on the cover was this little child, 10 years old, feeding red apples to a lion lying under an apple tree. Right. It was all a, a drawing, okay? Right. Red apples on a green tree, green grass, little 10 year old boy feeding apples to the apple tree on the, the lion. So I thought, well, that's heaven. So I said to him, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to give apples to lions. <laughs> that's what she said. Right. I did, and I right. meant it. Right. Because that's what I knew. Right. I knew nothing about the Bible. Right. So he says, don't go anywhere. Stay right here. Tomorrow night I'm going to bring some folks over. We're going to talk nicely to you. Just don't go out of this building. I said, no, I won't. So the next night they came, all my friends, about a dozen, 15, not all of them, but a dozen, 15 kid friends, tried to talk me into my, my senses going back to my right. normal life. And I couldn't. I didn't want to know what they said. I was reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I was loving it. So uh, then, by the way, they all got born again, led them all to Jesus. I got baptized six weeks later. Wow. And I uh, had 200 people I led to the Lord personally that I brought to church in that bus, all got saved and baptized with me that night. So how long was that from the day you got saved to 200 people getting saved? Six weeks. Six weeks. And I got baptized. Wow. My brother, to take you an example of the kind of thing happened, my, my friend Graham Patterson used to surf with me as well. I went to him and I said, Graham, do you think I've lost my mind? He said, yes, we all think you've lost your mind. I said, I'll tell you what, why don't you come help me, come to church. If you, think, if you go to church and you say, I've lost my mind, I'll never go back. And I meant it, right. but I just knew he was going to get saved. So he came with me, got gloriously saved, and he was living with my brother. My brother said to me, when he heard that, when he, when he came into his apartment, he said, came to see me, he said, don't you ever come and see me again. I want nothing to do with you ever again. So the night I got baptized, I went to see him, knocked on his door. And I said, he said, what are you doing? I told him to come see me. I said, I'm going to get baptized tonight. I want you to come see that. He said, what's that? So I said, well, there's a swimming pool in the back of the church on the platform. <laughs> right. And they're going to put me in there with my clothes on. Then they're going to take me out. <laughs> and that's baptism, from what I understand. Right. <laughs> He says, I've got to see this. So he came with his girlfriend and they sat in the back row upstairs. I saw him up there. I'm sitting in the front. Now the pastor on Sunday nights would pray for people and they'd all line up and he'd pray for them and the most of them would fall out on the power of God. So the next minute I see him in the line, my brother, and here he comes. And eventually he gets the pastor. And I did not know this, but he said to his girlfriend, I'm going down there and I'm going to prove to my brother that this is nonsense. He's going to put his hands on me and nothing's going to happen. So the next minute, puts his hand on him, hits the floor, is rolling backwards and forwards, screaming out in tongues. And I'm looking at this thing, he's right in front of me. I can't believe this, because see, it's real. Right. And I, after I spoke to him, he said, doesn't know what happened. He laid hands on him, he, when the power hit him, he said, Jesus. And the power of God hit him, and he started screaming out in tongues. Wow. God saved baptized the same night as me. He's wow. in the ministry right now preaching wow. full-time. And Graham Pettis is in the ministry preaching full-time. You, know, you know, I think we need to be more aware of that, that when we get saved, God promises our household as well. Yeah. 
And once we get saved, our family doesn't have a chance. If we just stand That's on right. that promise exactly. that you and your household will be saved. I love yeah. that. Well, my father got saved. My wow. mother got saved. See, I want to ask you that. My what, sister was got it, saved. What, so you didn't grow up in a Christian family? No, no. Wow. So what was the faith that was even taught to you, if any faith was taught to you? Uh, my, my, mother, my grandmother was Dutch Reform, strong Christian. Okay. Dutch Reform Christian. Um, she had some influence right. on, on my, my mother. So in my mind, I knew that God was real. But when I was three years old, I actually died from um, nephritis. I was, my blood pressure was well over 200. Mm. And I went, to be, I went to heaven when I was three. And I saw Jesus. And he said to me, go back to the earth. Your time hasn't come. But I came back and never lived for him. Never lived for never him. Lived for him. Wow. Even though I'd seen him. So I knew he was real, but I didn't think that I, I, everything we saw on earth I thought was religion, right. ritual. Right, ritual. So it wasn't not, real to you. Not real. Right. Not real. Right. Right. That's, that is so interesting that when you got saved, um, there was such a radical transformation yeah. in your life. Yeah. Do you think that's like normal or do you think that's something that's just very unique? You know, you know, it depends on the person. Okay. We have to accept Christ as Lord. Right. Give our life to Him. The born again experience and enter that complete covenant relationship only comes when there's two lives giving right. completely to each other. And Christ gave all, we have to give all. Right. So it depends on how much we give at the altar. Right. If we surrender our heart to Christ, we'll have a Paul on the road to Damascus right. transformation. Right. But if we don't, we're not. Right. And right. but you can't tell by what happens there on the altar. That's the thing, because a person might not be emotional. Right. But get up and their lives transform. So, but it depends on the heart. If I'm giving my life to Christ, so that when I do an altar call, I try and help you understand. Listen, you're giving your life away. Right. You can't have keep your life and have eternal right. life. You've got to give your life to have eternal right. life. Right. And if you understand that and then you still make the commitment, that makes all the difference. I yeah, and, and what you were saying is that you had no, really no experience with God. And then once you were saved, your desires changed. And there was a conviction where you started realizing, I'm not sure going to the club and, and encouraging people to drink is right anymore. Exactly. And that's, uh, and, th and that's described as a new nature. And some of you out there are saying, well, is this religion? Do I need to like get rules and obey them? It's not that, it's transformation from the inside out. See, when God comes into your heart, this is what he does. He saves you from your old bad habits, your old thinking, and then he gives you his desires and his spirit. You know what that means? He gives you the ability to live a life you can't live. And we're just seeing an example of a surfer, someone who's working the discos, and, and he has really everything. Young man, good looking guy, has everything going for him, but this is the truth. There was still something missing, and you knew that. There was a lot missing. Yeah. A lot missing. You're absolutely right, Pastor Marco. You know, people ask me many times after that, don't you miss your old life? Mm -hmm. Your old life of nightclubs and and all that kind of stuff that goes with it. And I stop and I say, you know, imagine you turn 21, your father buys you a beautiful red Ferrari out the box. And up until that day, you're driving a bicycle. A year later, they said to you, whatever happened to your bicycle? You're gonna say, I don't know. I don't even know where it is. <laughs> and that's what it's like for me. Comparing what I had then to what I found in Christ is no comparison. Wow. No comparison. Hey, that I, might, had, I yeah. haven't missed that life one second in, my, wow. in, in, in more than 50 years. That's wonderful. And, and that's why, you know, the Bible talks about all things pass away and everything becomes new. Yeah. And if you're willing to lose your life, you actually gain what you've been looking for. And no one told me not to run the nightclubs. Right, right, exactly. I, that's the Holy Ghost came into me. Uh, I wasn't full of the Spirit, but I got born again of the Spirit. So at that point in time, I just knew. No one laid down laws for me. I just knew, I don't want to do that. I just don't want to. Right. You know, similar, similar story with my wife when she got saved at 22 years old. And 
she went to a Bible study, she got saved, and the friend that brought her to that Bible study after Bible study used to go to nightclubs. So she invited Lisa to, my wife Lisa, to the Bible study. My wife got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And then they said, let's go. The friend that brought her they said, now I invite you to a nightclub. And my, my wife, after she got saved, she goes, I don't know if that's right, that we should go to a nightclub. And my mother actually taught that Bible study where my, mother, my, my wife today got saved. And she, she called my mother, and I remember that day she called, and she says, um, my friend is inviting me, the one that invited me to the Bible study, is inviting me to a nightclub tonight. I don't feel right. Is that right? Should I go? She goes, oh, no, that's not a place for you to go. And it wasn't rules. It was a conviction within you. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when you're born again. Exactly. So many people think, well, do I have to stop doing this or stop? You know, you know, you come the way you are. And then when you're born again, you have new desires and you have that's a right. new nature. Exactly. And you start seeing things the way God sees them. Exactly right. right. Beautiful. Now, now let's let's go into I know we're going to go years ahead. Let's talk about ministry. You're, you get, and you're actually doing ministry right away. Six weeks, you're seeing 200 people get saved, which is amazing. And that's really the fruit of a Christian anyways. They share their faith, and as they share their faith and people see the transformation, uh, God begins to touch their lives. But God called you to ministry, and that you would do this full time. When did you realize that you were actually called to be a pastor or a minister? The day I gave my life to Christ, okay. I knew. The next day, I went to, to the bookshop, uh, to the record shop, cancel the, the, the record contract. We have, don't have record shops today, but as I walked out of that record shop, I knew hmm. that eventually one day, I would actually be in America as well. I, wow. I just had the whole understanding of the whole ministry wow. right before me in revelation form. I threw a glass darkly. I didn't see it clearly, but I understood in my heart what the plan was. And uh, so God leads us step by step. He doesn't lead us one time the whole way. We follow the cloud every day. So, but I had this idea in my heart or knowledge of what was going to happen. And I pursued that. It was about 10 years after I got born again that we started the ministry. And I met my beautiful wife. We got married a year before we started the ministry. The first day, um, we handed out a thousand flyers in the parking lot of the mall, um, and they uh, said we could use the community center. Community center. So we had two people came, two strangers, to the first service. And um, so my wife led the praise and worship, and I did the preaching, prayed for the people. And then we stood at the door and shook their hands and watched them go off into the sunset. And we didn't know who they were. Right. Didn't even ask their names. That's how green we were. Right, right. And um, so, uh, but I did say to them, come back and bring one person each next week. So they came back next week and there's four of them. Wow. So we knew we had revival, it just doubled in a week. <laughs> right, exactly. And um, so the church just grew like crazy. Um, I had a little office. In, in right close to the place we were staying. We, we took all of our money and we put it in the bank. Well, I had money, we had money for a house, to build a house cash, we put money in the bank. We said that we're giving to the Lord, we're not gonna use it to run the church. So with that money we did rent a little one room office with no curtains, hmm. no carpet, no windows. And I put a carpet in there right. and the curtains in there and I lie on my face I said, well, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to go and pray all day. I lay on my face and prayed six to eight hours every day in wow. the Holy Ghost. Came out and prayed for the sick and the miracles were incredible. Wow. So the church grew. In three years, uh, we were running three, 4,000 people. In three years? In three years. And the miracles were amazing. I just want to stop there. Um, there's a few scriptures that come to my mind while you were speaking. You said you, you realized you were called to ministry and started getting a clear picture about your future. Yes. And people say, well, how does that happen? Most of us are dealing, without the Lord, this is what we're dealing with, confusion. Like we don't know what's no, to come. We don't. we don't know what our future is. No. And this is the promise. Not only will God change your desires, the, the Bible says, the Word of God says that the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. Exactly. Isn't that amazing that God wants us 
yeah. to know his future for our lives. Exactly. And, you, and what you did was you accepted it, you believed it, you spoke it over yourself. And that's when you know you're actually receiving mm -hmm. something from God it, or from the enemy, you start repeating it and you start saying it, mm -hmm. yes. And not only did you say yes, but you started taking action, you passed out those flyers and you went and you rented or a visit, uh, you rented a community center or you're mm -hmm. there and, right, and two people sense. showed up. And we see again, if you're faithful with little, God makes you rule over much. Most people don't succeed, not because they didn't, they didn't have a good idea or an idea from God, they just didn't stick with it. Right. And you stuck with it and that's how you grew. And then you started seeing really massive growth. But, but remember, it was 10 years of preparation spiritually exactly. to get to that place. A lot of people want overnight success, but the reality is mm -hmm. there is a walk and you're faithful little, then God makes you rule over much. Now you have 3,000 people, and you said in three years? In three years. Wow. So what, I mean, where'd you house these 3,000 people? Well, we, we built a building. You built a we, building. We, 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 I went to see, my wife, by the way, stuck with me the whole time. This would never have happened without her. Right. We did this together by the teamwork. grace of God, you know. Yeah, teamwork. Yeah. So um, we went to see a guy who owned 33 acres of land in a beautiful spot on a major freeway and asked him if we could buy the property. We had no money. And he said, okay, fine. Uh, how are you going to do this without any money? I said, well, if you'll give me uh, three weeks, I'll raise the money. Wow. So he said, okay. You got three weeks. I said, I want to put a tent on the property and, and have a service. He said, fine. So um, we put a tent, uh, we, 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 we had a meeting with our leaders to put a tent on the building. So somebody said, why don't you build a building out of steel? I can put a factory building up here. We can concrete it and we can put it out like a church in 17 days. Wow. If we get the members to do it. So I said, okay, fine. So we call the whole church together and they all got to work. And we built that building, cash, supernaturally, the gift of faith operated. I just said to the business manager, I said, now tomorrow, somebody's gonna bring the money for the concrete. So we're gonna pour 3,300 square meters, which is 33,000, 33, 3, um, uh, I think it's 33,000 square feet, right? right? Of, of floor space. Floor space, yeah. Concrete. And we're not going to, we're going to pay cash for it. Somebody's bringing the money tomorrow. Well, let me, so you guys so, didn't have the money. They had no money. So you have a contractor, you tell them, pour the concrete, someone's Wait, bringing so the money. I had a, my business manager. Okay, did you know someone's going to bring the money? No, I had no idea. So I you just declared I prayed, it. I prayed. You prayed it. And I asked God for it. And I <laughs> then told declared him. it. So I was sending the money. Right. I didn't tell him who, but I arranged that for them. Right. Um, and so the next day, it, there are hundreds of trucks lined up. I mean, concrete, <laughs> dozens really, not hundreds, of trucks lined up right. with mixing concrete yeah, and they yeah. came poured all this concrete. Right. And I remember just straightening it out, living it up. And I came in there at five o'clock and it looked beautiful. So I said to him, what time did the guy come with the money? He says, no, he came just before the trucks left. So I said, oh, good, thanks. Now tomorrow, this is gonna happen. And the guy now, was the God, is coming with money. Let me ask you, was God prophetically showing you that or, or while you were I praying or you just declaring it by faith? I just prayed in the Holy Ghost what to do. Right. And then I just had this knowing in my heart. Knowing, yeah. Yeah, in my heart. Do okay. this, do that. Okay. And I had faith for it. Right. At that time. Perfect. And that knowing came. Perfect. That's a, I lay on my face That's praying, major. In the right. Holy Ghost. Right. So, right. So then that right. came, you see. And right. I said, okay, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. I want to, I would just, I want to reemphasize that is, um, you, he wasn't just proclaiming things, he was proclaiming what he knew in, in his soul that God was telling him. Exactly. And, and I've seen that happen over and over yes. when, even when we got into this building, you right. know, uh, I just knew that this was the building. We had no money, but I knew. Right. And, and when we started the building, building it out, we had no money, but I knew God will provide. Right. And we're in a similar situation. A lot of people don't do anything because they're always waiting for the provision first right. instead of ex receiving the provision through faith. But God will reveal it. So yeah. it's not like you're just moving and you're just yeah. saying things. It's that like you're actually being led by the Spirit. And you know because yeah. God gives you 
a faith that's so strong that's undeniable. Yeah. It's like I know 100% right, right, right. it's going to happen, that's the right? Gift of faith operating right. at that moment. Right. Which is which comes by the spirit by an unction of the Holy Ghost which is beyond the normal faith that you have. Right. And it's for that season. Right. So and it's for that project. It's real. It's for that project. Right. So you know you can't doubt. Right. And when that happens, that's how I minister to the sick by the gift of faith. Right, right. right. I just know you know it. When God says pray for that person, I just know they're going to get healed. Otherwise, they wouldn't tell me to do it. Yeah, I always tell people, uh, like, I have a lot of vision that I write down because I right. always write down the vision. Right. But a lot of vision, I put it on the shelf until I have the faith for it. Right. Okay. So I, That's yeah, nice. I like that. Yeah. So, and then when I get the faith for it, I go, now let's pull that out. I like it. I know it's time for this. And when I present it to my staff or present it to the church, there is no doubt. Right. We're not trying this. Yes. It's gonna happen. Right. And you become like a like I would say like a bulldog. You grab onto it uh -huh. and you do not let go of that thing exactly. because the Holy Spirit won't let you. Even if someone tries to talk against it, you become very aggressive. Oh no 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 no. Use the right language. <laughs> it is not maybe it's gonna happen. Let's hope it's gonna happen. It will happen. Exactly. So be careful what you're saying here. That's exactly. Right. right. You protect that. Right. Yeah. So that it's something for us to learn yeah. that the spirit works like this. Exactly. And people think, are you crazy? I go, no, I know hundred percent this is the time exactly for this. Right. And it's gonna happen. Exactly. And as a leader, that helps you develop integrity with the people. Because people won't support a leader that is not is saying things and it's not coming to pass. Right. So as we we hear things from God, we know it's the right time and, and we do it, yeah. we're going to see God's word come to pass because God's word does not fail. Exactly. And then they, they say, okay, well, he's hearing from God. We can trust him to follow him and even support when they're asked to support. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So now you built this, 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 did you build, you built the, you built that? 17 days. 17 days. So the guy arrives back from vacation. Right. Wow. To see the tent. Wow. Oh. And he's on his scooter on the top of the property. And he parks it there, he just puts his feet out and I can see him. He's looking at this construction. And he's wondering how that happened. He's only been gone three weeks. We've been <laughs> having church already. So he drives up. That's a miracle. <laughs> We bought the, the property, so but it's a, it's a story I put in my book on on um, Give Me This Mountain. Wow. Title, Give Me This Mountain. But today, I mean, God has done a wonderful thing. We've got a brand new building now in Atlas Road, which you've been to. Beautiful. And we've got a very large church there by the grace of God. And, um, and we have a Bible school there with uh, many hundreds of students between six and 600 and a thousand students depending on on the time uh, you know and um, so from that Bible school we started churches around the world we've got 1300 churches and we've got 82 Bible schools around wow. the world and about 4,000 students currently attending those Bible schools Wow about 200,000 members in the churches you know you know I'm you know I live here in America and you're in in South Africa and the first time I visited you know, the truth was, when I went down there, I'm expecting to see more like shacks, mm. you know. I'm not expecting to see a church like yours. And, and I thought like, wow, it, you know, we're gonna, we're, but when I went over there, I was thinking, wait a second, these, this church is nicer than American churches. It, and, and I did not expect that, you know. And I mean, it's, it, you have a mall in your, in your foyer. I mean, you got businesses in your foyer, boutique stores. I know your wife even has a boutique store there. And I was like, a food court. And I was like, what is going on here? I was so impressed. The worship was amazing. The services were, uh, were top notch. It was, it was totally kingdom. And I was like, wow, in South Africa, because I know they have way more challenges there than America. And, and, and what are the challenges there in South Africa that we don't have here in America? Well, um, there's considerable amount of violence and crime, a lot more than here. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not as safe. Unemployment, more than 40%. 40%. Electricity, um, people don't have electricity for about 10 hours a day. Um, none at all. No water mm -hmm. at, at that time for about 10 hours a day. 
at various times. Right. And they don't know when it's going to happen except the last minute they get told. Um, so there's a lot of poverty now. Um, but God's prospering the church and blessing it. It's just amazing. And the people are getting blessed when they come. How, how, do, you, how do you get people in it from the poverty to prosperity in the Lord? How does that happen? You have to teach them the Word of God. Okay. Once people know how to trust God, then everything changes. Wow. Then they succeed in life. Do you think that's what's happened in your church to, mm -hmm. so that you were able to build a church that's like this? That's the Joshua Principle. Okay. What is the Joshua Principle? Joshua 1 8. Okay. Meditate my word day and night. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you do, right. you will obey and do the word. Right. And then everything you do, you'll prosper. Right. Have you seen that in your church? Oh, yeah. Is there a specific testimony of someone you could exact, give an example of? I can tell you many stories of people who came in poor and started businesses and succeeded. One particular man, um, he came in and he had nothing, um, no job, nothing. He started a business, he prospered, he got married, had two kids, and became very successful. And he came to see me and told me that he's going to go and live in Durban. Now we're in Jansburg. Durban is a beautiful city on the beach at that time. Mm. And he said to me, I'm going to go down to Durban. I feel like I want to be in a semi-retirement position and I'll, I'll start my business down there. And the Lord spoke to me and said, don't go. This is where God put you. You are prospering because of the word that you receive. So good. And now God's given you this prosperity so for you to contribute to the work of God. Here. Right. And if you go, you're going to, like a hose, I said to him, you take the hose too far, you pull it off the tap, and the water stops running into the right. earth. The water stops running out. It'll dry up. Right. So I, I, I sense by the Spirit of God, you're going to go too far right. with this. Right. And you're going to pull yourself out of the anointing and out of the right. road. It's true. And you're going to lose everything. I said to him, don't go. Stay here. That's what I believe God's telling me. Now, I don't have that for everybody. No, no of course. Once in a blue moon. Yeah, yeah. What? I have that. Well, he went. I forgot about him. About five years later, he came back to, three years later, he came back to see me. He was crying. He said, um, I was sitting in my apartment on the floor, no furniture. They repossessed everything. They repossessed my cars. They repossessed right in his house. Represent, repossessed everything, the house, mortgage, everything. Couldn't pay it. His wife then said to him, I'm leaving with the kids, going to go live with her mother. Took the kids, went to live with her mother. She's divorcing him. And he says, I'm sitting there crying, talking to God. How did this ever happen? And I look up, and there's only one thing in the whole house. It's a green hose pipe lying, rolled up in the corner of the room. And he says, I saw that, and I, your words came flooding back to me. You're taking the hose off the tap. The water's right. going to run out. Wow. I've come back to ask you, please forgive me. Wow. I want to come back to church right. and trust God to restore my family and prosper me again like he did the first wow. time. You know, it's, 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 it's so important to be in the will of God. Mm -hmm. you know, and I always tell people, I want to be anointed. I want to be blessed. I go, well, if you want to anoint, be anointed, that means you're seeing the handprint of God, the manifestation of God. You have to do what God's telling you to do, when he's telling you to do mm -hmm. it. And how he's telling exactly you to do right. it. Exactly right. And if you do that, what he tell you? If you do that, by the you're gonna, you're actually gonna see the blessing of God. It's not just doing what he tells you; it's doing it when he tells you, and how he tells exactly you. Exactly. And right. even where he tells you to do it. It's so important because exactly. I know I was called to this city of San Bernardino, and this is second poorest large city in in the, in the country. Wow. And people say you're gonna start a church there, and I, I, but I knew he told me to start here with the right. hurting, the broken, and the poor. Right. I didn't right. know how to start a church, just maybe probably like the way you did. I didn't yeah. know, yeah. but I, I began to follow instructions as the Holy Spirit was downloading to me. One right. step at a time, the church was built and we're able to have a successful church reaching thousands of people right here in the second poorest large city yes. in the country. That's there amazing. hasn't been a church built in this in this city for t over 20 years. Wow. You know, we're able to come in here, nine out of 10 churches shut down in, you know, within a year wow. uh, because the poverty's high, yes. uh, the needs are high, yes. and, um, and, and, and the resources are low. 
But but when you're in the will of God, right. there's supernatural provision, and you've seen mm-hmm. it. And I think someone out here needs to hear that. But um, but the, I want to end it with this. I, I know you have a real strong healing ministry, and it, it was part of how you got saved. Now right. I understand even more of why healing ministry is part of your DNA. Uh, well, you heard about a baby that was healed, and 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 it led you to the house of God. And I know you have a healing ministry now. Um, why do you think it's so important for churches um, to have healing in their ministry? How much time do I have to answer that question? What was that? How much time do you want to give me to answer uh, that question? Oh, a few minutes. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> as long as I know, um, yeah. Jesus spent more time praying for the sick than he did even preaching. Wow. If you think about how many thousands of people he prayed for every day, individually, one at a time, you know how long that takes. Right. It's hours and hours. Right. So it's obvious he spent more time praying for people, thousands every day. And he did that according to Matthew. Okay? And he should know. Matthew should know. Mm-hmm. Because He did that because Christ healed everybody on the cross, past, present, and future. Mm. Psalm 105 says, when the children of Israel at the Passover lamb in Egypt, in Goshen, they were instantly healed and they left with, there wasn't one feeble or sick or weak among his tribes. Mm. That's it. The moment they ate the Passover lamb, they were healed. So the shadow can't heal them if if the substance didn't pay it pay for it. Christ mm-hmm. on the cross right. paid for that. Right. Right. So because mm-hmm. that was paid for, they got healed way before the cross. Mm-hmm. So Jesus healed had Jesus had to heal everybody to prove that the cross was purchasing healing for everybody. If there's anybody he turned away, then that would cause us to doubt that the cross didn't purchase healing for everybody. Right. So he did that. And because he, the cross purchased healing for everybody, he had to heal everybody that came to him for healing in his earthly ministry. So to him, it's a big deal. I right. mean, not only did he buy forgiveness for us, but he bought uh, salvation and forgiveness, prosperity, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. Right. He be, you know, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for, his sake, for our sakes he became poor. That, through his poverty, we might become right. rich. That word means full supply, full material supply. needs. It's the grace of God that prospers us. We've got to understand that it's not our own ability. Right. If we understand that, accept that, grace allow God. God's it's grace. It's not earned. Allow God's right. grace to bless us and give That's Him the beautiful. glory for it. Okay. And then tithing is, is important because there's a covenant practice. Mm-hmm. So now, healing is one of the things He bought for us, health on the cross. It's ours, it belongs to us. And uh, we've, without preaching health and healing, we're not preaching the full gospel. Okay. That's why I see it. Right, okay, that's very good. I th- and I think the enemy um, wants people not to believe it, yeah. you know, in the full power of God exactly. or the manifestation of healing and mm-hmm. deliverance mm-hmm. and all these promises that he promises believers and right. say, well, that, that, that ceased. But we're, but we're seeing people get healed today. Exactly. And we're seeing people get delivered from demons today. Exactly. It's actually happened because Jesus is now in us. Right. So what I want you to do for the next, just um, before, as we close, minister to those that are, that are watching um, a prayer of healing for them. And, sure. And if God's leading you to, if there's somebody you sense out there that God is showing you okay. that they're sick, um, let's minister to them right now. Fine. So I'd like you to put your hand on any part of your body where you are suffering. That is just an act of a point of contact. You're going to accept this by faith. We have to understand that Christ purchased healing for us on the cross. It belongs to you. It's been yours for 2,000 years. Isaiah said you were healed. Matthew said in Matthew 8, 16, 17, those stripes, um, he bore your sicknesses and carried your pains, referring to Isaiah's prophecy, you were healed. Peter says, 1 Peter 24, you were healed. We've got to understand that Christ purchased that for us. So we have to now accept the fact that God sees you healed, paid for. 
We've got to accept that fact and say, thank you, Father, I receive this. It's a gift. It's not something you can earn. The problem is so many people try and earn it. That's why they don't get it. You've got to accept this like a gift you get at Christmas time. You just say thank you. When you say thank you, that's faith. I've received it. I have it. So thank you is the statement of faith that will allow the power of God to flow into your body right now. And you'll feel that power. You know, many people came to Jesus to touch just his clothes because they said power flowed out of him and healed them all. Now that power is right where you are because when two or three are gathered together in his name, he's there in the midst of them. And God is everywhere present. The furthest star away, God is there with all of his power. So he's right there with you now. The moment you say, thank you, Jesus, that power will flow. And you'll feel it. You can't see it. You'll feel it. Like you feel electricity, you can't see it. You'll feel it. You'll feel a warm heat go right into your body right now. And that warm heat is God working, the Spirit of God working. And the pain will go, the problem will go, and you'll be healed. All right? Now put your hand on your body. I sense now there's somebody with cancer in the stomach. Put your hand right on your stomach. The cancer is going to go right now in the name of Jesus. You ready? So we're going to say thank you, Jesus. In the moment to do that, the power flows. You ready? All right. That's the switch. To throw the switch for the power to flow. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. All right. There it is. The power of God's flowing right now into your body in the name of Jesus. There it goes. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Now keep your eyes closed and just keep thanking Him, praising Him, because He's working now. There's a few of you that need surgery. God's doing it right now. God's doing surgery. Growths are disappearing. Thank you, Jesus. Growths are disappearing right now. Ears are opening right now. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Arthritis is being healed. Asthma is being healed. Praise God. Epilepsy is being healed. Sugar diabetes is being healed. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Now, just lift your hands and say, Praise God, I have it. Thank you, Jesus. Now, check yourself out. Do whatever you couldn't do before and do it vigorously. If you had pain in your stomach, hit yourself real hard, harder than you've ever done before. Real hard in the stomach. You'll see the pain is gone. So whatever you had before, you'll find it's gone. Now, get on the phone and phone three people immediately that you know and tell them, Jesus healed you. Don't mention my name. It's not about me. Tell them, Jesus healed me and you received it right now. Do that, because if you testify, you're going to keep what you got. The devil won't be able to steal it from you. And if you ever sense any kind of symptom come back in a week's time, get on the phone again and just phone somebody and say, last week, Thursday night, whatever it was, I received my healing and I'm staying well, praise God. Just phone them and tell them and you'll see the thing will go away. Because the devil would like to put back on you what the, he did initially. But God's healed you. You're going to keep it. God bless you. Wow. Isn't that great? Thank, I, I really felt the presence of God healing people. And it's that simple. Um, we're seeing the Spirit of God reveal people that need healing. Jesus still heals. And I love what you said. Thank you is the switch. I love that. And I felt well that when, they said, when you said that, that there's people being healed and mm. and if today you know you got healed make sure you message us let us know i got healed today there's there's something in the power of your personal confession i want to say thank you let everybody know what you've received exactly. what a great day yeah. you know who thought that you'd tune in today and hear such a wonderful testimony and i know if you're a pastor you got blessed if you're a minister you got blessed or or maybe you never giving your life to jesus and you're saying i'd like to have that life there's something missing you could have it today we were praying for healing 
And I want to make sure I lead you in a prayer of salvation, yes. that you give your life to Jesus because mm. God has a wonderful plan for your life. In Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, my thoughts and my plans for you are for good and not evil, that you would have a hope and a yes. future. Just think about that. And God has a plan for your life. And if you would just live according to God's mm. plan, everything you're looking for, you'll find. It's not in your career. I, and I'm not saying don't have a great career, but be careful that you don't make your career God or a person, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, mm. a, a, a God, because they can't make you whole, but Jesus can. Mm. And he could give you eternal life. Are you sure you go to heaven if today were your last day on earth? Is there something missing in your life? I know if you don't have Jesus, there is something missing. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're really confused about your future. We talked about confusion. Like he knew as soon as he got saved, God began to reveal his future to him. God has a wonderful future for you, but it's your one decision away. Jesus is knocking at your heart's door. This is what you could do. Open up. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And the Bible says if you believe in your heart that, that you know you're a sinner, but you also believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and he rose from the dead and you confess with your mouth, you'll be safe. How simple is that? Jesus already did all the work. We're talking about grace. You know what that means? You can't earn salvation. You can't earn a healing. Just receive it. We serve a good God. He's just been waiting for you to ask. He's willing and he's ready. You don't have to beg him. You just have to be willing. Let's pray together. Repeat after me. If you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to be saved today, today's your day of salvation. Not tomorrow, today. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I know. I know that I'm a sinner. That I'm a sinner. In need of a savior. In need of a savior. I believe. I believe that you suffered. That you suffered. And died. And died. For my sins. For my sins. And resurrected. And resurrected. From the dead. From the dead. On the third day. On the third day. You conquered death. You conquered death. Today. Today. I confess you. I confess you. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. I commit. I commit to living for you, to living for you, for the rest of my life, for the rest of my life. I receive, I receive the free gift, the free gift of eternal life, of eternal life. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Praise if you said that God. prayer, you are saved. Thank you. You have Jesus. eternal life. Hey, some of you receive healing and you receive salvation. What a big day for you. Amen. Who thought that you'd tune in and you would get that kind of breakthrough in your life. And you know, if God's given it to you. This is what he's saying. Go ahead and share it. Give it to somebody else. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you next time. God bless.